You don't necessarily need a cyber truck, but do you really need any truck at all? Do you need a truck to look macho or to get a job done? Well, a lot of parking lot and pavement princesses out there looking so good, never seen a ounce of dirt in their lives. No, my friend, it could be argued that you don't need a full-size pickup truck. What you need is a cowboy hat. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. Joining me uh, sometimes is uh, the pretty good Randy. <laughs> he uh, does great work over on his channel. Check him out as well. Everybody comes to my channel, Brian, for the shirts. Come on, you know this. <laughs> it's all about the shirts. It looks like the lampshade from a Denny's in the 70s. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> so this is an older article. It's from The Drive. And it's in uh, this article's over four years old. But it hasn't aged a day. Unlike the hipster, who's now probably sporting some gray in his beard. The question is, you and I know people who are going to buy a Cybertruck who do not drive trucks. Uh, I know Larry Goldberg has already ordered his. He uh, was invited to get to place his actual real reservation. Yes. And I think Larry's going to love it. But Larry does not strike me as a pickup <laughs> truck kind of guy. I know if it had six seats, I would have bought one instead of a Y. I would wait. I would hope that my van didn't die and wait and then stretch to get it. And uh, that's true for a lot of people. Uh, you've got a couple examples of people who do not drive pickup trucks who would absolutely buy one. Yeah, well, you know, I've mentioned a couple of times that the cyber truck that we have on order is not for me. In fact, I can't. I've tried to remember if I have ever actually driven a pickup truck in my life. <laughs> no, this pickup truck is for my wife. She's the one that wanted it. She said immediately on seeing it, I want one of those. Amazing. So there you go. And because it looks safe. She had more works. vision than I did. <laughs> it took me weeks to warm up to it and months to start loving it. Uh, I have owned a truck. And it was a truck I used, uh, I had rental properties at the time, and I needed a truck to move appliances or sure. material. And I'll tell you, uh, that was absolutely a work truck. It was a 76 F-150 and, you know, no frills, no accessories, none of that, just a plain old truck. And I never drove more than probably 50 miles in a day. I never towed. Uh, but I used it as a utility vehicle. And this is a unique one. If a cyber truck had existed at the time, I could have had that as my only driver. Not by two cars, by one. Have something that can move appliances and people. And at the time, my car only sat four. So this would actually be more, have more utility than my car. Uh, and faster and uh, cheaper to operate. All well, those know, things. The, the, the truck today is a completely different animal. I mean, let's face it. I mean, I, I've uh, treated my cars as trucks. As, a, as an entrepreneur who was actually making products and shipping products, I have destroyed a couple of Plymouth Fury convertibles back in the day, back in the 70s. Um, they were giant cars that carried a ton, and they were convertibles. You could you, treat them as a truck. But... It's a whole different game today compared to the truck you would have bought in that day in terms of the size, in terms of the power, in terms of the interiors, in terms of the luxury, in terms of being able to take a family of 17 along with you wherever you're going. I'm 17. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it, who knew about having, you know, back rows, you know, when I was young? I remember when crew cabs started to be a thing and uh, I thought it was very strange because the, you had a choice. Do you want a very small truck bed or a very long truck? And they still make those. You can still get an extended bed with a crew cab, yeah. but boy, you can't turn it. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, do you think this is a bad thing? Do you think people are going to get something that's unnecessarily wasteful that they don't need? Uh, and that that might be defeating the purpose of going e electric in the first place. Well, I think they are. <laughs> I think that is the nature of the human, at least in the, the United States. We get a lot of people complaining. We use more square footage in our homes than any other country on earth. 
we have larger vehicles than any other country on earth. I mean, so that's, it's just kind of the way we are. It's kind of a Texas, California thing, you know, to have the biggest avocado in the world or something. And um, uh, <laughs> so what you have though, in terms of the cyber truck is you are going to be replacing a Ram or a, a Tahoe or whatever that is using gasoline. So no matter whether it's still a larger vehicle than maybe you're justified in owning, maybe it is going to use a little more electricity than a smaller vehicle, um, it is still replacing because otherwise that same person would have possibly bought an F-170, 80. I don't know the numbers. How big does an F get? Uh, 450, 550, I 450, think it might go even beyond yes, that. Okay, yes. Uh, but the bottom line I see is a lot of these people, like you said, are replacing not necessarily other pickups, but other SUVs. Right. There are people who are replacing full-size Suburbans and Tahoes and Escalades. Uh, but there are also people who are just replacing anything bigger than a sedan. Uh, but even a sedan uses... If you look at the mile per gallon equivalent, mm -hmm. uh, even the Hummer gets better mileage than the average car, and it is the least efficient EV ever made. I'm not saying everybody go out and buy an e-Hummer, uh, and good thing because no one is. But uh, even if the efficiency was as bad as the electric Hummer, it's still a net win. Um, but again, don't buy that. It's It's just... It's just a brute force approach to solving a problem that requires an elegant touch. And it's just, it's just terrible. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think it's going to be on a winning path. Um, do you think, so I have to ask, what is your wife's going to be replacing? It's going to be, re well, not exactly, it might be replacing my Volvo. <laughs> okay. Because in other words, I will probably take over the Model Y. Gotcha. And the Volvo, the aging, 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 13-year-old, 12-year-old, how old is that? Anyway, my old Volvo, unfortunately, I really like, I have, see, I understand a little bit about the folks that are sad that they're going to lose their vroom, vroom. You know, because sure. I, th that Volvo is a hopped up car. You know, it's a twin turbo, 300 horsepower. I mean, it's four and a half seconds, to zero to 60. I like driving my Volvo, but uh, that doesn't mean that the Model Y isn't an incredible product. <laughs> so I will probably give up my Volvo, take over the Model Y, or who knows, maybe I'll trade both in and get a Model 3, which is a little more my style. Sure. So the Volvo probably gets 20, 25 miles to the gallon. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it's it's fun. It's a fun car, but uh, replacing that with a Cybertruck would be a tremendous net win. Yes. But again, even unless you're looking at something like, an, like a very small compact and comparing it to something outrageous like a Hummer, it, it's, it's, there's no comparison. It's just a winner. Every time I see someone say, oh, uh, like the other day, the MI Tesla guy, the Michigan Tesla guy, uh, said, you want to know what the real range is in very cold weather? Here it is. And it was about three uh, watt hours, uh, three miles per kilowatt. Hmm. Right. It was something like that. So I responded on X. Here's the math. Uh, you're paying six pennies a mile based on your state average electricity versus your state gas. 12 cents. Yeah. And another gentleman said, well, I'm in Queensland and our electricity is at 30 cents a kilowatt. And mm. I said, yes, but I just checked your petrol is at almost eight bucks a gallon. <laughs> and he said, those numbers are out of date. It's actually quite a bit higher today. <laughs> so, uh, everywhere I've looked, everywhere I've looked, you have to, if you take the least generous assumptions on charging, say you're only charging at peak times, at peak places, in public chargers, it's still cheaper than gas. Maybe not by much, but it's still cheaper uh, as well. You know, I I distill my own finest gasoline at home. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yes. I just, I think uh, the, the argument uh, against folks who just want to have a truck and would love to have this crazy, wild cyber truck uh, to toot around in. I think the arguments against are nonsense. 
I think it will be worth it. Uh, my wife thinks it'll be worth it just because her grandson will go nuts when she drives up in that thing. And he'll, he will just be thrilled to get a ride and we'll be talking about it for weeks or even months. I think it, you could save quite a bit of money and just buy any van and write free candy on the side. That would work not just with your grandson, but all grandchildren. Uh, it's worth a shot, Randy. Think about it. Just think about it. You're thinking what are we gonna? It. What are we going to do with you? What are we going to do with you? I don't know what we're going to do, Brian. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Well, what we're going to do is uh, leave a comment uh, about what kind of car, if you're buying a Cybertruck, what are you replacing? What vehicle is uh, going to be uh, no longer your daily driver? Because if it's an electric car, that just means now there's an electric car available secondhand for someone who needs a better deal. Because uh, electric cars have been, until quite recently, a bit difficult to get on the secondary market. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do the usual things. Head over to Randy Kirk's channel. Link in the description, as usual. And uh, everybody else, stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots uh, from the cockpit of your Cybertruck.